Good afternoon to citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, specifically to those resident in Tobago, and of course to members of the media joining us, and all those persons joining us on social media and other platforms. It is my pleasure to once again communicate with you as Chief Secretary of the Island at this point in time to speak to a number of matters that are important to the people of Tobago at this present time. Let me start by wishing all of you a safe Easter. I know it is still early. We are still some time away from Easter celebrations. But I want to take this opportunity as it might be the only opportunity for me to do so in this forum because I don't expect to be at another press conference before the Easter period. So let me take this opportunity to wish all of you a safe and holy Easter. During this period, we expect over 10,000 visitors from Trinidad to come to the island of Tobago. All the reports that I've gotten so far from hoteliers and owners of guest houses and other forms of accommodations suggest that we will have during that period an occupancy rate of over 80%, which of course is good for the island at this point in time. It's good for not only owners of those establishments, but our various business persons as this will provide an opportunity for some much needed economic activity on the island at this point in time. So we welcome our brothers and sisters from Trinidad. My information is that all the ferry tickets are almost sold out. Flights are fully booked to the island from now until after Easter. And it is very welcomed at this point in time. However, I want to take the opportunity to remind Tobagoans and even our brothers and sisters coming from Trinidad that we are still in a pandemic. We are still being impacted by this COVID-19 virus across the world. It continues to kill. I think the death toll is almost 3 million. So therefore, it continues to be very dangerous. And therefore, while we welcome all the much-needed activity, while we welcome all the visitors from Trinidad, who, of course, are expected to visit our lovely beaches and go to tours of the Buku Reef, the rainforest, and a number of other sites and attractions, and who we expect to support our business here, businesses here in Tobago, from restaurants, bars, and other food establishments, groceries, car rental company, shops, etc. I want to remind all of us that we must adhere to the regulations of this pandemic period. And therefore, I have been given the assurances by the top brass of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, specifically those responsible for the leadership of the police services here in Tobago. I met with the Assistant Commissioner of Police responsible for Tobago, and I've been given the assurance that all systems are in place to ensure that we have a safe and secure Easter period. And therefore, I want to put persons on notice, especially those who may be so inclined to break the law and to break the rules of engagement at this point in time, that the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service will be out there and they will be expected and required to do their jobs. They will be expected to ensure that there is enforcement of the pandemic regulations and therefore bars are expected to close when they are supposed to close and persons are expected to, of course, socialize, have fun, but we do not want to have a situation where Tobago becomes COVID capital, and therefore persons must act responsibly. And therefore the police will be out there doing their jobs, and all other arms of the protective agencies will be doing their jobs as well to ensure that we continue to remain safe during this period. 
I also want to put on notice those tour operators, especially those operating tours to the Boko Reef, and even owners of the various accommodations, restaurants, etc. We must ensure that we operate sensibly during this period. And therefore, guidelines and protocols in terms of how we should operate during this pandemic were issued many months ago. And I want to say to those persons, I want to admonish them that we are required to follow all those protocols lest we run into trouble. And therefore, Reef Boat and other tour operators are expected to operate at 50% capacity, I think, is the current requirement. And of course, restaurants are expected to have some, some enabling environment for social distancing. And of course, the usual hand sanitizing and hand washing rules must continue to be enforced. I want to say again that it is important for us to remain safe during this period. Yes. We welcome all the business activity. As a matter of fact, Tobago needs it at this point in time. But we must remember that at the end of the day, we are still in a pandemic, and we must ensure that we operate in a manner that will not allow us to see a significant increase in COVID-19 cases. With respect to touting and operations on the marine park, we have taken steps, the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, in collaboration with the Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries. We have taken the necessary steps to ensure that there is or that there will be collaboration between those divisions, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service and the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard. And even, I, I think we are getting some assistance even from the Defense Force Reserves, right? And we will be ensuring that the situation with touting does not continue during this period and that we will have safety and order in the operations of the Marine Park, especially during this period. And of course, our Reef Patrol officers will be out there to ensure that boats do not go beyond their limit and that people do not engage in activities that will not only expose them to infection from COVID-19, but would also place them at risk in terms of the possibility of drowning, etc. So we expect to have cooperation from all citizens, all tour operators and business owners, so that we will have a safe and successful Easter period. So once again, I want to encourage all our visitors to come to the island, have fun, enjoy Tobago. I've always said and will continue to say that Tobago is the better half. I mean, it may not be an exact half, but the better half of the Twin Island Republic. So come to beautiful Tobago, support our establishments, and I trust that there will be good and effective customer service as we have taken some actions over the last few months to ensure that we improve in that area. So we look forward to the support of our brothers and sisters from Trinidad and we look forward to even our own Tobagonians visiting our various sites and attractions and having a safe and enjoyable Easter period. The other thing I want to speak to and of course, it's connected to our tourism in a major way, is the airport relocation project. I have said time and time again that that project is tremendously important to the future of Tobago and the fortunes of this island, especially in the tourism sector. But more important than the airport project of course, is how we deal with those persons that are affected, persons that are being asked to relocate and take up residence in a new place. And therefore, we continue to empathize with those persons. I personally understand the difficulty some of them are faced with 
I've taken the opportunity to visit a couple of the impacted persons, a couple of the affected persons, and I understand the difficulty. And therefore, the Tobago House of Assembly, we have a responsibility to ensure that we make this process as easy as possible. And therefore, as the situation progresses, even some time ago I said to the public that persons who are in this situation and feel like they are being treated unfairly should reach out to my office. And some persons have done exactly that and have highlighted their specific circumstances that I believed warranted a change in our policy approach with respect to those developments. And therefore I want to announce three changes or three adjustments to the policy. One, persons who came from situations or existing homes where they had multiple persons living in either the same house or where they had multiple houses on the same property, rather than them having access to one parcel of land at the Chauvin development, which is the area identified for residential purposes, we are going to allow those persons to have access to more than one parcels of land at the residential rate, in this case of $30 per square foot, to ensure that they can in fact move on with their lives. And this of course is subject to the availability of parcels in that area. Secondly, the Cove development, which is identified as the area for commercial activities, or persons who are relocating their businesses, we have made a decision that in the areas that are appropriately zoned where we can have some residential buildings, we will make land available to persons in the same situation as described before, where maybe one small parcel of 5,000 square feet will not be enough because of their previous circumstances. We will make land available to those persons in the Cove area. As I said before, that area has been identified for commercial activities only, but we are now going to permit persons to have parcels in the appropriately zoned areas to treat with residential properties. And it must be strictly for residential properties because we are allowing those persons to purchase the land at Cove at the residential rate of $30 per square foot instead of the commercial rate of $50 per square foot. So of course, persons are encouraged to approach the airport relocation committee's office to discuss their specific circumstances so that they can begin or continue the process of moving on from this difficult position. And the other issue has to do with persons who were compensated for rent. In many instances, some of those persons may have exhausted those allocations already. And for some reason, they have not completed the, ne the negotiations process. And therefore, they cannot move into a situation where they could begin to construct their homes. Persons so affected will be compensated with one year's, one additional year of rent. And the way we are going to do that is through a further subsidy on the cost of the land. So in other words, persons who have exhausted their rental compensation and still have not completed their negotiations process so that they could start building their new homes, they will be compensated with one year's additional rent. And we're not going to give them the money in their pocket, but they will simply pay that amount less for the cost of the land. Right? So those are the three areas, those are the three changes that we are making to the current policy to ensure that we treat with the needs of the affected persons at this point in time. Again, I cannot underscore enough. I cannot reiterate sufficiently the importance of that project to the people of Tobago. But we must ensure that at the same time, while there is a cost and 
while there is a price attached to development, we must ensure that all those persons are taken care of as far as we can possibly do so and as far as the law provides. And I'm saying that even in these specific circumstances, where the Tobago House of Assembly made a decision to undertake two housing, well, one housing development and a commercial development, that was in fact us going beyond what the law required of us. But we saw it necessary, and we still see it necessary for us to continue making adjustments so that we can treat with the specific difficulties and the specific circumstances faced by persons who are so impacted. So at this point in time, I will take any questions that members of the media may have. Thank you, Chief Secretary Honorable Ansel Dennis. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Davia Chambers, and I'll take you through this afternoon's question and answer segment. As usual, members of the media, once you have a question to pose, just indicate by raising your virtual hand. Clayton Clark, Radio Tambrin. Good afternoon, Clayton. Rather, Elizabeth Williams, TV6. Good afternoon, Elizabeth. Good afternoon. Um, good afternoon, THA Chief Secretary Ansel Dennis. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you? I am fine. I am fine. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to know from you mm -hmm. is that um, there's a situation I'm not sure if you're aware of with respect to the Herbs and Spice Project in Goldsboro. Workers are claiming that they have not been paid for three fortnights and it's going into Easter and they still have not been paid. I don't know if you can look into the matter. We are also hearing that there's a lot of nice herbs and spices that they plant and reap, but it's also going to waste. That situation obviously is untenable. There is no excuse for persons being paid as late as three weeks, you said? Three um, fortnights. Three fortnights. The, the situation was brought to my attention. I instructed the administrator to treat with that urgently. So as soon as this press conference is finished, I will call once again to find out why these persons have not yet been paid. Right? There seems to be some administrative issues there. But as I said before, there is no excuse for paying people late, especially, as you rightfully said, in a situation where Easter is coming up and people are expecting to have uh, an enjoyable time. Right? So that is untenable, and I will look into the situation once again to find out why those persons have not yet been paid. Mr. Chief Secretary, just one added question, because I know we have two questions um, per round just wanted you to give your email address to persons and also the number that they can call with respect to the airport expansion project where persons can come in or email to um, issue their concerns that you are now addressing. Right. So I will prefer that persons go directly to the airport relocation committee to treat with their respective circumstances. However, as I said before, Persons who feel that they are being treated unfairly and they require my intervention, I, I don't want that to be abused because there are some things that can be worked out by the committee. But the email address that they should submit their concerns to is anseldennis.tha at gmail.com. Again, it's anseldennis.tha at gmail.com. But again, persons should go to the committee and have their processes sorted out there. The committee was put in place specifically to deal with that. But again, I am open to treating with persons who feel that they are not being treated fairly. And as I said before, some persons have already reached out to me. Thank you, Elizabeth. Do we have any more questions? Seeing that there are no more questions. One more statement, closing statement. <coughs> Excuse? So, 
Do we have any more questions? Please indicate by raising your virtual hand. Clayton Clark, Radio Tamron. Good afternoon, Clayton. Clayton, hello, are you hearing evening. me? Yes, hello. Hi, good afternoon. All right, I do. Have, I was away. Yes, good afternoon. Do you have um, any more questions? Yes, one question. Mr. Dennis, um, so this weekend, uh, Easter activities in Boko, uh, there's a construction going on on the jetty as a rep and the secretary for, for tourism. Can you just give us an update on the work there? And not just the jetty, there's some other work along the beachfront there. Right. Now, in terms of, um, I heard you mention something about Easter celebrations. There will be no Easter celebrations in Boku per se. I know the village council, they were considering having a virtual arrangement that would, would have been recorded um, for public consumption, but there will be no Easter festivities. So I will urge persons do not flock into Boku in large numbers expecting to see any good race at this point in time. Again, due to the pandemic, we cannot have any good racing as we have been accustomed to over the last many years. Um, with respect to the beachfront project, of course, the boardwalk project started in 2015. My information is that it should be completed within the next two months. Um, I think basically the work is going along quite well. I have some personal issues with the quality of work uh, with one of the contractors, the, the one doing the phase one of the project. I have some issues with the level of carpentry that I'm seeing there, right? And therefore, I will be conducting a site visit at 3 p.m. When I leave here, I'll be going straight down to Buku along with the chief administrator and our representative, our project manager, the person managing the project on our behalf, and we'll be paying attention to those issues. We want to ensure that Tobagonians and the country by extension get value for money. And I do not want a situation where after the project is complete, we have very soon after issues with materials falling apart and, and rust and that kind of thing. And some of the issues are are basic things, um, a development of that nature, which of course will be exposed to salt. One must use stainless steel bolts and nails, etc. So I was very surprised to see when I passed down there, I think it was um, last week, Thursday I think it was, to see a situation where normal nails that you will use in normal construction circumstances were being driven into wood right for parts of the rails down at the boardwalk so i am going there today and the contractor will be asked as a matter of fact he was already written to to rectify those issues and that will not be accepted by us not at this time and not ever under my watch akin lobby holder tobago channel five good afternoon akin lobby So we'll go to Camille McKechnie, Guardian Media Limited. Good afternoon, Camille. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Mr. Dennis, on behalf of the Baptist community, um, they're asking when exactly you would discuss with them the school building, because they said they've been trying to reach you since October, and you're supposed to reach back out to them, but they've had no word at all about it. And they've already spent more than $2 million on the Signal Hill property. So on their behalf, I'm asking publicly, when are you going to at least reach back out to them to, to, to say what kind of assistance the Tobago House of Assembly would give to them? In addition to that, I wanted to ask, is as soon as you made, made mention about the defense force and the police and the Coast Guard, we touting at uh, Pigeon Point and the whole reef operations, whether or not touting is illegal. That's the very first question one of the, the persons operating now there reached out and asked. Well, it, it, 
might not be legal, but it is against the policies of the Tobago House of Assembly with respect to the ticketing system. I want to remind Tobagoans and the country generally that sometime in June, I think it might have been June or July, somewhere there, when we reopened the marine park, we agreed to a particular arrangement. And I want to tell you how the arrangement came about. And of course you will know that over the years, there has been serious complaints about the manner in which persons operate within the marine park. And you do have to listen to me. Go to TripAdvisor. Go to Facebook. And you will see some of the numerous complaints made by our brothers, some of our brothers and sisters from Trinidad and even some of our international visitors where they are being harassed, where boats are being overloaded, where persons are selling and utilizing illegal substances at Storby and even out on the boats during the, the reef trips, right? And I don't think we require rocket science to tell us that that kind of behavior is detrimental to our tourism product. I don't think we need a rocket science to tell us that that situation should not be encouraged and it should not continue. And therefore, in an effort to treat with that, all the stakeholders were brought together. A committee was put in place with representatives from the Division of Tourism, the Division of Food Production, which has responsibility for fisheries, the various stakeholders, representatives from the um, Reef Owners, as Reef Boat Owners Association, representatives from the TTPS, the TTCG, and other important stakeholders, the Jet Ski Association, etc. And we agreed, we even entered into a memorandum of understanding that was supposed to be the rules of engagement as to how we operate the services and the trips to the Boko Marine Park. And we agreed that there will be two ticketing boots. They were constructed and outfitted fully by the Tobago House of Assembly. There is one at Storby and there is one at Pigeon Point. In addition to that, signs were placed advising visitors to those facilities that the only location to purchase tickets was supposed to be through those two ticketing booths. And therefore, all of us agreed, the members of the association agreed that this is the way we will go in the best interests of the industry. Because another issue you had is whereas I think the standard prices for tickets at the boots is $120 per, per, per adult, I think. I think children might have been half price. Can't remember the exact figure. So don't quote me on the $120, but it's somewhere wrong there. Right? So we agreed to that. But then, of course, with touting, you, you don't only have the harassment. You don't only have our visitors feeling uncomfortable because I myself experienced it personally. Sometime before I became chief secretary, I attempted to drive into Storby, right? And because I'm a local person and understood fully what was happening, I was not completely scared. Because as I swung right to enter Storby, three or four young men rushed to my vehicle. Right? Attempt, now, obviously, they were attempting to sell me a, a, a trip to the reef. But what if it was somebody who wasn't totally aware of how the operations were taking place at the point in time? They may have felt that these persons are behaving aggressively. They may have felt that these persons coming to, to take the vehicle or, or something of the sort. And therefore, we made a decision that we had to treat with it. There had to be order. There had to be a better service provided, and therefore we agreed to our process. The process worked for some time, but as with anything else, if it is not managed and enforced effectively, it will fall down. So it's not a matter of whether or not touting is illegal. Touting presents a challenge to our tourism sector. Persons have complained from time to time about the harassment, about the kinds of activities that take place, about even the various operators bad talking and cussing and fighting right on their story. And therefore, I will not sit here as Chief Secretary or as Secretary of Tourism and allow that situation to continue. And we had all the buy-in, 
I think all the stakeholders are in agreement that we must do better, and I'm saying today that better must be done. The policy is anybody entering Storby or Pigeon Point, there is a specific boot where tickets must be purchased from. Of course, the operators will have their own relationships with their clients. A number of them have websites where persons could go to the websites and book directly. That does not prevent that from happening. Persons can still continue to operate like that. But what will not be tolerated is the kind of behavior that we have seen at the entrance of Storby and in some cases Pigeon Point that is not conducive to good customer service and that is del deleterious to our tourism product here on the island. Clayton Clark, Radio Tambrin. Good afternoon, Clayton. Good afternoon again. Um, a question, well, information reaching our newsroom. Uh, we are seeking some clarification on an issue regarding Terence Henry. On an issue regarding Terence Henry, about some gratuity payments made to him while working at the quarries. So we are seeking some clarification on that matter. So, so basically, gratuity was owed to him. And as far as I'm concerned, it should have been paid by now. Right? Because, of course, as you will know, we began a process again sometime in June last year where we put in place a gratuity clearing house team. And the intention was to ensure that all outstanding gratuities owed to persons across the assembly will be paid. Now, all have not been paid as yet, but the process continues. And the expectation is that every single person who is owed gratuity money by this assembly, it must be paid, especially those persons who are owed uh, pre-2017. So I think Terence Henry was one of those persons and that was treated with during this process. Akinlabi Holder, Tobago Channel 5. Good afternoon, Akinlabi. Good afternoon. Can you hear me this time? Yes, we are hearing you. Okay. Um, Secretary, Secretary, I didn't know if you would have answered it concerning the, the ticketing system at um, Storby, but do you have any information as to why the system would have collapsed? Um, a lack of enforcement. Mostly, because the reality is that while persons agreed generally to the new arrangement, there were some who may not have been in full support because it was not in the best interest of their pockets. And that's the reality. And therefore, it was always a matter of time for those persons to fall back on their word and engage in the same bad habits that we had to treat with in the, in, in the first place. So I think due to a lack of enforcement, one person may have started back with touting, and then eventually you had other persons following suit. Right. So there is a need for stronger enforcement. I met with the committee uh, last week, and we agreed to some new actions, and of course we're going to have closer collaboration with the TTPS and the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard to ensure that we have the kind of enforcement that is required in order for this to work. But I want to remind the tour operators again, this is not about preventing anybody from making money. But making money must not come at the expense of the general tourism sector. And as I said before, the manner in which the operations took place there in the past presented challenges and it impacted the Tobago brand, the tourism brand, quite negatively. And again, do listen to me, go and do your own research, go to Facebook, do a Facebook search for reef tour operations or book of reef trips or however you want to put it, go to that website that review uh, tourism attractions and sites and tours, etc. I think it's tripadvisor.com, and you will see Tobago featuring, unfortunately, not only in terms of the Boko Reef tours, but in a number of areas where we are proving to not have the best customer service available to our visitors. And therefore, we have to change that, 
and we have to get our act together. I want to um, make a follow-up question concerning that. Since you said that there, it's technically not illegal to tout, what sort of system can we see being put in place, whether by the assembly or by the association themselves, that could really hold these rogue elements in to account, to account and um, have them be accountable? Right. So the policy is clear. The policy is anybody entering Storby and wishes to go to the reef must purchase their ticket at the designated boot. We are saying that persons who refuse to abide by that by engaging in the sale of tickets outside of the boot, within the premises of the Tobago House of Assembly, of course, those persons are in fact breaching our policy. And therefore, it is my humble view that the security responsible for those facilities have a responsibility to remove those persons from the facility. And that is how I see it. And let me add as well that some time ago you might remember, I think it was November, at the final sitting of the House before it was dissolved, we did pass a Tobago bill, a Tobago House of Assembly bill concerning this specific issue. And it, it, it was an attempt to really treat with the management, the overall management of the Buku Marine Park and any other sensitive area that may have been designated as marine parks in the future. And that bill was passed by us. It is now with the cabinet. And of course, from there, once it gets out of the cabinet, it will then go to the parliament for its approval before it does become Tobago law. So we did not sit on our behinds, we got up, we realized there was a problem, and we attempted, and st we are still attempting to fix it. And we went as far as drafting legislation for the first time in years here in Tobago to, en to ensure that we are able to treat with that problem. Because I want to remind us again that the Boko Reef and the Boko Marine Park is one of our main, if not our main, tourist attractions on the island. Camille McKechnie, Guardian Media Limited. So, um, just asking again on behalf of the, the um, Baptist community about the educational center at Signal Hill. Uh, I mean, I know you went on to the other question. So ask you on my, behalf of them publicly, what's, it, what's the next Yes, step? my apologies. I forgot to respond to that particular question, but I will reach out to them for a follow-up meeting. Right? I had one meeting with them in the past, and I really cannot recall the specific nature of their issues at this point in time. I, I know there should have been a lease for lands given by the assembly to them. So I will have a follow-up meeting with them, um, if not this week, sometime next week. Elizabeth Williams, TV6 News. Hi, good afternoon again. Just afternoon. one question, because I'm, I'm seeing persons are asking with respect to the beautiful Pigeon Point, if the, um, the roadway leading into Pigeon Point, large number of craters, potholes in that area, and I mean Pigeon Point is one of the best beaches in the world, but to journey to it, it's a real bumpy ride. How soon will that roadway be paved so that tourists entering Pigeon Point could at least not only enjoy Pigeon Point, but enjoy the journey to Pigeon Point. It, it will be treated with Pigeon Point like many other roads across the island is in need of patching or paving. Of course, paving is, is something that you can never do enough of. Um, it's simply a requirement all the time. But Specific attention will be paid to that road. Again, as you rightly said, it's an important road. It leads to one of our most trafficked tourism hotspots on the island, and therefore uh, it will be treated with. And um, generally, we have to try to treat with our road infrastructure better. A lot more patching is needed across the island, but of course, resources are limited. So it's only a certain amount of roads and a certain amount of patching that you could do within a specific fiscal year. There are other needs as well, of course, drainage. Uh, in some cases, properties are threatened by landslides that will require retaining walls, etc. So we will continue to do our best in the circumstances. 
Akin Lobby Holder, Tobago Channel 5. Um, yes, good afternoon again. Secretary, um, this is concerning the, the public pool at Kendall. We got some pictures recently you, that the facility is in quite a state of disrepair. So I don't know if you could speak to us as what exactly is going on with the facility. Um, and I have a couple more questions afterwards. Yes, um, I think YMCA, that is the NGO that has responsibility for managing it. They have been struggling due to the lack of activity. But we made a, a decision as recently as today to give some financial support to them so that they will be able to treat uh, with the management and maintenance of those facilities. So expect to see some improvements quite soon. Okay, um, this is, this is um, a question. To, the next question is to build on the um, issue of our tourism products or attractions. And given that you said 10,000 Canadians are expected to come um, or more. The island over the weekend, or more over the weekend. Um, there has been concerns raised about the condition of the steps towards Pirates Bay. They're saying they're getting more sea, they're kind of falling into disrepair, and there are some trees blocking some of the steps, that kind of thing. Um, will the assembly seek to get something done, perhaps power wash the stairs, clear the pathway before the Easter weekend? Well, I, I would think that this presents an opportunity because if it's just a simple thing as um, power washing the steps, and of course that if, if the steps are mossy, then that is a safety issue. Um, but if that is the only requirement at this point in time, maybe it presents an opportunity for us to engage uh, in some public voluntary partnership, meaning partnership with the THA and some voluntary sector organization. And maybe it's something that we can get done as a community project. I saw the concern raised on Facebook and therefore I'll have some discussions with a couple of the NGOs and community groups from that area to see what we can do um, soon. Because if we are to mobilize to get it done within the Tobago House of Assembly, of course, it is going to take some time um, to get it through the various channels. I think all of us by now understands how bureaucracy works. Um, but it, it gives us an opportunity, as I said before, to maybe engage a community organization if they are so willing. And I myself will be open to being a part of that exercise. Okay, and um, in some person saying that they also need some toilet facilities down there. That would be more of a long-term project, but is that something you think that the assembly is looking into? Yes, that will be a long-term project. Um, it is something that we have to continue to do, which is the improvement of our sites and attractions. But it's something, of course, that will happen over a period of time because we simply do not have the funding available to do all at the same time. So we will continue to do our best in terms of uh, creating those opportunities, creating those facilities that our tourists can benefit from, and even our locals to ensure that we are able to provide the much needed amenities to our visitors and locals who will visit those um, sites and attractions. So there are a number of projects on stream. We have uh, the, the Storbay Beach facility is one identified for refurbishments. Of course, the facilities there are not uh, at the best at this point in time. We also have the Charlottesville facility uh, as one identified as well. And we will continue to identify more as, as we move along. Um, final question. Um, I don't know if you have mentioned it earlier before, but we know that some of the vaccines have come into Trinidad and Tobago. Um, can you just confirm whether Tobago will be receiving their batch of those vaccines tomorrow? And if yes, can you say what time they will be coming in? I do not have that information. Um, so the Secretary of Health or the health officials will be best placed to respond to that. But I know there will be some of those vaccines available to Tobago, of course. I do not know exactly when that will be, nor the number of vaccines that will be made available at this point in time. Right, thank you. Welcome. Do we have any more questions? Seeing that there are no more questions, I'll now invite the Chief Secretary, Honorable Ansel Dennis, to make his closing statement before we wrap up. 
All right, thank you very much to the members of the media for that grilling. A number of questions were asked. At one point in time, I felt like I was on the witness stand. A number of difficult questions as well. So um, let me thank you all and continue to encourage you all to, um, you know, conduct your business as efficiently and as effectively as you all are accustomed doing. Um, of course, the island and the country, by extension, needs a media that is fair and, of course, unbiased. And therefore, I congratulate you all for your continuous work. But the final thing I want to speak to is, of course, Tobago's current situation. I'm surprised that none of you asked. But um, since you did not ask, I will speak to it at this point in time before this press conference closes. Of course... Uh, almost immediately after the election results, I gave a public address to the people of Tobago and Trinidad by extension. I made a number of decisions with respect to the management of the Executive Council. Of course, at the point in time, three secretaries were asked to resign. That, of course, was not a legal requirement. It was simply a decision made by me as Chief Secretary. And I also asked for the intervention of the central government because at the point in time I believed that the only resolution to this situation was to go back to the polls. And I continue to believe that. And it is also the PNM's position that back to the polls is the most democratic and sensible way to treat with this impasse. But of course, I also committed that I will continue to discharge my legal responsibilities. I am still Chief Secretary, fortunately or unfortunately, some might say. But the reality is that the law provides that an executive must continue. The alternative, of course, is to have no executive at this point in time. And every serious country, every serious system facilitates a situation where if for some reason a new government cannot be put in place, then the incumbent government remains in place until such time. So I am here supported by six other secretaries to form the Executive Council, which continues to be in place as required by law. The Prime Minister met with the 12 Assemblymen and the two Members of Parliament for Tobago subsequently. And the idea was placed on the table that maybe the two parties can come together and form a unity Executive Council that will be able to install a presiding officer, elect a chief secretary and deputy chief secretary, and move along with the business of the Tobago House of Assembly for a particular period of time. It has been, I think, two or three weeks since that meeting and since that commitment. The both political parties have met. They have discussed the issues via press releases, via written correspondences between the both political leaders as well. And we have not been able to find agreement. We have not been able to find a solution up to this time. Of course, I think all of us have heard publicly the unreasonable requirements of the PDP which the PNM did not agree to. And therefore, we are still in this situation where we do not have a fully constituted Tobago House of Assembly. The last thing that I've heard from the leader of the PDP is that all deals are off the table. I am not sure what that means for this particular process. I am not sure if at some point 
his mind may change again as it has changed before. But at this point in time, with a comment which says that all these are off the table, we seem to be unable to find a solution here in Tobago. And I want to say to the people of Tobago that in spite of the current circumstances, it is not a situation where the public purse is at risk, as some may want you to believe. The Auditor General, the same Auditor General whose management letter was used during the campaign as the basis of the campaign against our political leader in the last election, is still on the job and conducting audits. I want to remind the people of Tobago as well that politicians do not sign checks. We do not necessarily have access to some vault or the public purse. There are accounting officers who have that responsibility and every single aspect of expenditure goes through a series of processes from the approval at the Executive Council, if it is required, to the implementation by the accounting officer, the, the person with administrative responsibility, which of course is the administrator, to it going all the way down through the accounting units, from the check staff to the other various units within the accounting departments, before any check is issued or any purchase order or whatever is issued to effect a payment. All those checks and balances that were in place from November 17th when the House was dissolved, November 17th last year to now, all those checks and balances remain in place. However, this situation should not be allowed to continue for too long. And therefore, I want to say again to the central government, and more specifically to the Prime Minister, as I said before, two or three days after the election, that this situation requires the intervention of the Parliament. Of course, we can continue to wait to see if the leader of the PDP will change his mind and to see if the both parties will come back to the table. But of course, there are philosophical differences between the parties. There are stark differences in our style, in our programs, in our beliefs, and in our ideas. And I think a very clear demonstration of that difference is really a situation where the leader of the PDP continues to be the leader of the PDP and was actually fielded in this last THA election as a candidate despite the numerous allegations and criminal charges that are hanging over his head. Despite those differences, many of us thought that maybe the two parties can come together and work together and even where I stand, I hope that maybe we can, in fact, come together and get on with the business of the people. But the reality is, and many of us, we like to see things from an ideal perspective, but sometimes we forget the reality. And the reality is that two to three weeks after that meeting with the Prime Minister, where there was a commitment to attempt to meet and find agreement, there is still no agreement as I speak. And therefore, I am uncomfortable with the current situation continuing as it is. And I'm saying again, as I said before, three days after the election, that this requires the intervention of the parliament because I do not expect a resolution to come from the political parties. And therefore, I am placing that on the table again. But I say to the people of Tobago, despite the circumstances, 
the executive council led by this chief secretary will continue to discharge our responsibilities without fear, without favor, without malice, and without ill will. We will continue to manage the resources of the island with prudence during this period of time. And I'm hoping that this situation will be resolved in short order because I am not comfortable with the current situation continuing as it is for too long. I also want to remind the people of Tobago that you have elected 12 assemblymen who were already sworn in by the president and who are being paid as far as I'm aware and therefore they have a responsibility to serve their various constituents across all the electoral districts of Tobago and therefore the people of Tobago are not without representation during this period. All right, so I basically wanted to place that on the table, that this situation cannot and should not be allowed to continue for too long again. And having made that statement, I'm seeing that Ms. Williams has a question. I will facilitate that question. Just one question, Mr. Chief Secretary, as you, as you stated that you are not comfortable with the situation and you're hoping that it can be addressed in the shortest possible time. Um, with respect to this situation, why has the, um, the PNM stated via a release previously that mediation is not on the table? The PNM stated in the release that was sent to members of the media yeah. that mediation is not being looked at at this time. Now, while I do not wish to speak for the political leader, if mediation is required to simply come to an agreement, are we not saying to the people of Tobago that under that arrangement, that mediation will be required throughout the existence of such an executive council? I mean, if we can't simply agree on an issue in terms of getting the thing started forming an executive council, can you imagine the kind of acrimony, the kind of disagreement, the kind of chaos that may possibly come out of such arrangement, right? So it is in that context that I believe the two parties should have been able to work out the issues together, manos to manos, without the involvement of any mediator. And having failed to do that, we are basically saying to the people of Tobago that we will require mediation for the whole duration of the existence of that executive council. Right? And I want to remind the people of Tobago again that while the circumstances as we speak may not be ideal, I'm saying that at this point in time at least, we do not have any chaos as far as I'm aware right, or confusion and bacchanal at the level of the Executive Council. Thank you, Honorable Dennis. So that brings us to the end of this week's post-Executive Council media briefing. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Davia Chambers. Do enjoy the remainder of your afternoon. And always remember to practice the three W's. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Good afternoon. <laughs>